All right guys, today we're gonna to dissect the fetal pig and the first step that you're gonna to need to do is to make sure you have all your safety equipment and all your other equipment that you need. So let's identify the tools we'll be using today for our lab. The first thing you're gonna need is a pair of uh, scissors. Uh, you're gonna need a pipette. You'll need a probe, either a straight or uh, bent, it doesn't matter. And you will also need a scalpel. And safety equipment that you're going to need, you're going to need an apron, so go ahead and put your apron on. You will need goggles, go ahead and put those on as well. And you will need your gloves. So, go ahead and take a minute and put those on so to protect your hands and to make sure you don't get this smelly pig all over you. There are medium and large gloves and probably some small. So make sure you get the right size. You only need to get one pair of gloves for the whole dissection. This is not intended for you to waste gloves. So make sure you don't get one and then have to take them off. Put them on after you are ready to begin and not um, have to go to the bathroom or anything else like that. All right, the second main step that we're going to do today is we need to secure our specimen, which is the fetal pig, to the pan. So, to do this, we're going to lay the fetal pig on its dorsal side, which is the back, and expose its ventral side, which is the stomach, so that we can make our dissection. So, what we want to do is we want to tie a knot around the first forelimb so that it's tight. So, we want to get as tight as we can, and then... Once we get that first knot tied, we want to run the string under the pan. And he's going to flip flop a little bit, but he'll be secure in just a second if you do this step correctly. Now this is important because if you don't, your dissection is going to be a little bit tougher. So now we're going to run it under the pan and we want to get it tight as we can. And we just want to pull it tight and we're going to tie a knot on this side. So get it wrapped around there and then you want to pull it tight, and then you're just going to tighten up that knot one more time. Now again, this is important because if you don't get this step, he's going to be moving around or she's going to be moving around on the pan. All right, the next step you're going to do is you're going to tie the hind limbs, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to tie a knot around the back leg. You're going to run the string under the pan you want to get your pig back centered if it shifts on you while you're doing this step it might take just a second to get done you might have to slide your pig up just a little bit so that the string doesn't slide out the bottom and then we're going to tie secure Securely tie this string down as well, just like you did the other one. Get it tight. Sometimes it's a little hard with these gloves. The string wants to attach to them. All right, and once you get it done, your pig should be immobile, not being able to move on you. So when you're cutting him, he's not going to slip. All right, our third step is going to begin where we are going to be making our first incisions into the pig. Now, our incisions, you need to, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your scalpel is not going to cut you. Always cut uh, away from you, especially if you or your partner is, has their hands on the pig as well. But make sure that you don't have your fingers anywhere where that scalpel can cut because it is very sharp. All right, our first step and our first cut is gonna be right below the chin and we are going to gradually move in with our scalpel. If you try to cut it like you cut a steak, it's gonna go right through the structures that we wanna see. So we wanna begin right here at the pig and we just wanna gradually, this is very sharp, you can see that I'm just barely pressing down and I'm making an incision. We wanna come down to about where the four limbs are and we're gonna, you see I've made this incision. I haven't gone very deep. I'm gonna come back now and I'm gonna make another pass through here. Don't press down too hard. And you can see that I'm able to spread the tissue away. And I need to go a little bit deeper 
and I'm gonna move it with my hands. He's not gonna hurt you. And I'm gonna push my hands through here and I'm gonna spread out the structures that I'm wanting to see. Now I do have a breastbone right here that's gonna be a little bit harder to get through. So you might have to press down a little bit harder there. But for the most part, we can see what we need to see right here. Now there is some tissue and you could stick your scapula in there if you wanted to loosen that tissue around. But this is basically what we're wanting to see on this first step. Now if you look, we can see the uh, thyroid glands on the side here. These are these glands that I'm pointing to right here with my scalpel. That is your thyroid gland. And then also the pig's trachea is located right here. This is the trachea that I'm pointing to with my scalpel. Now once you locate those, that's pretty much the first step that I want you to find. We're not really seeing too much yet, uh, but that is what it should look like if you've done that. Now, what the trachea is used for is for airflow to go through, um, and the thymus glands, um, they secrete hormones into the blood that control specific body functions. All right, step four, we are going to make some incisions at the lower jaw, all right, and we're going to hinge its mouth. So, we're going to start right here at the corner of his mouth, kind of like the joker, when we're gonna cut right down to the side. If you watch Batman, you've seen that the Joker has those cuts on the side of his mouth. So we have made those cuts. Now, you can also see in the picture, before we pull it down, the nostrils are seen to the left and the rigid hard palate, which we're gonna see in just a second. So we're gonna make those incisions we're going to take, you're going to take your finger and you're going to rest it right here on its tongue. Its tongue normally is poking out and you're just going to apply a lot, right much pressure and you're going to push down. And it's going to make a little noise, but you're going to push down and that is going to expose uh, that. And then what you can see is you can see the nostrils here and you can also see the hard palate. I want you to feel the hard palate. Um, you can see how hard that is. And also look at the needle teeth up here. The needle teeth are what we talked about earlier in the year where um, the they normally clip their needle teeth, farmers do, so they don't hurt the mothers um, because they can cause infection. So they clip those needle teeth so they don't hurt the mother and um, cause infection. Now, uh, the regions of the pharynx and glottis can be examined by a probe to distinguish between air and food passages. So you can take your probe, and if you want to stick it down into, you might want to get the one that's bent, might be a little bit easier, but if you stick it down into the throat here, you probably should be able to see your probe coming through the trachea. Now it might be a little harder, it's, it's kind of hard to see, so uh, I'm really not seeing it that great either myself, uh, but sometimes if you have a, a, a good opening there, you can see, there it is, and it's not coming through, but there, you can see my probe trying to come through, there it is, coming through the trachea right there, so you can see the air passage uh, where it comes out. Uh, but the main things we want to see here, you can see the tongue, uh, you can see the hard palate, and you can see those needle teeth. All right, step five, we are going to continue cutting on the ventral surface of the pig. Now, this is one of the most important steps that we're going to do because this is going to expose what the main things we're really wanting to see from our dissection. Now, we're going to make eight cuts here. And you want to make sure that you don't go too deep. Now, we do have a breastbone right here that you're going to have to get through. But if you cut through, uh, all his organs are located right down here under the diaphragm. And it's really soft tissue under there. And if you cut too deep, you're going to cut right through the parts that we're wanting to see. So you might have to cut a little bit harder here. But don't just kind of ease your way through it. Uh, and then when you get down here, you need to be really soft. So we're going to go through the eight cuts together. All right, so the first cut, we're going to come through. And we want to go right above the um umbilical cord. So... I can kind of feel when I get through that breastbone. Just kind of make a firm cut. And there's the umbilical cord. This is the umbilical cord right here. We're gonna come right to the top of that. All right, so that's cut one. Cut two is gonna be on the right side of the umbilical cord. And we wanna just cut real soft right there. Don't go too deep. Cut three is gonna be on this side of the umbilical cord. So there's your third cut. Again, you got organs under there, so don't cut too hard. Cut four is right below 
the umbilical cord you kind of pull up and press down at the same time so you don't cut those organs and then the other four cuts are just connecting the cuts that you just made so five six seven and eight and you can see when I do that that I should be able to pull my umbilical cord out of the way and then my organs are going to start becoming exposed. Now I can kind of lift up with my hand here now so I don't cut that organ there and you can kind of start splitting with your fingers and kind of moving around and then if you need to kind of lift up and you can kind of see here I'm going to move my scalpel up under here so maybe I can spread this out that breastbone will kind of hold there and I might need to come up here and kind of cut through don't cut the, the organs that you're wanting to see but kind of press up there so it'll spread out and I'm going to come and I, this diaphragm that's the diaphragm that's holding it together that separates the lower organs from the heart and the upper organs the lungs but I'm just going to come very gently and just kind of cut that diaphragm so this pig will go ahead and open up so I can expose my organs a little bit better and if you do it correctly, your pig should look very similar to this one. So you can see all of your organs above and below that diaphragm. All right, now we're going to look at the parts of below the diaphragm here. Again, this is the diaphragm. Above the diaphragm is your heart and lungs. Um, here's your heart. And then if you look here, your lungs, you can see them surrounding the heart. But we're going to look first at below the diaphragm, and you can see this largest structure here uh, is the liver. And we talked about the liver earlier, and one of your questions that you're going to have to answer is what is the function of the liver? You should remember that, um, so answer that. Now, below this, you can see this little bubble here. You should know that this is the stomach. So you can kind of see that blown up portion there is the stomach. The part right over here that looks like a little finger laying on top of that. That is your spleen. You should see that. Let's go back to the liver really quick. If you look, I want you to find the gallbladder. Now the gallbladder is uh, should not be too hard to find, but you should see a little bean shaped. Um, in mine, a lot of times it'll have air in it. This one does not, but it's a little bean shaped structure. And this is your gallbladder right here where my scalpel is pointing. So that is your gallbladder. Some of these might be green. That's what we said the color is, but a lot of times they get discolored when they're uh, preserved. Now, if you look here, we're going to move on down. The stomach, we, we remember the stomach was connected to the small intestine. So all these little things, this thing right here that looks kind of like a brain, that is your small intestine. We're going to take all these out in just a second let you, you see how long it is. And then... As you can see here, the large intestine, it, or the colon, is going to be this larger piece, but not as long. So this is your large intestine that we have connected right here. So you've got small intestines wrapping all around. You've got your stomach, your spleen, your gallbladder, and your liver. Now what we want to do is we want to remove all of these parts together because we want to see how long they are. So what I want you to do, I want you to lift up. If you lift up right here, your small intestine, you can take your scalpel and you can cut right there where that large intestine is leading out through the rectum and it would eventually go out the anus there. But you can see that structure there. That's part of the large intestine or leading to the, the rectum. Now we're going to just kind of slice right at the body so we don't lose any of it. And we're going to come up here and we want to get this whole part out that's connected, small intestine, large intestine, and the, the stomach. So we're going to just kind of cut and lift. And you should see it's lifting up here. And you can see that I'm getting this whole portion together. Now you might have to take the whole liver out with it, which will be fine as well. So cut right above the liver, this big, you can see how big that liver is, it's, it's fairly large. Cut it away from the diaphragm, the diaphragm might be attached to it. You can see that diaphragm's attached. And then I can pull this whole thing out and I've got the liver, the stomach, the spleen, 
small intestine and the large intestine all connected together. Now you can see right here where I'm holding it that that stomach, you can see where it feeds into the small intestine. And you can also see where the small intestine connects to that large intestine. But what I want us to do, I want us to remove the liver. We don't necessarily need to see that anymore. I'm not gonna tell you what the liver does because I want you to answer that question. I'm also asking ask you what these other stomach and the large intestine, I mean the small intestine and the large intestine do, so you'll be answering those. So you can see the liver there, how large it is. There's your gallbladder again that we just looked at. And you'll be have to tell me what that function is as well. Now, you can see your small intestine here and the, the stomach. So what I want to do, I want you to separate the small intestine from the large intestine. Now you got to be careful with this because the small intestine will tear very easily. But you should be able to follow the small intestine all the way around. So you basically just got to find where it starts and where it kind of separates. And it's got this little layer here. Also look at your small intestine. We said that um, this is you can see all those veins, blood vessels, they're important for a reason that I'm not going to tell you because I want you to answer that question. Um, but you should know what the main function of the small intestine is. And you can see in that lining is the veins that are going to do a certain function. But if you look here, I can, I'm just going to take that lining and I'm going to pull it apart with my fingers. Now I'm going to do that for a pretty good while. You can start to pull and it'll kind of break apart, but if you're not careful, you will pull the small intestine um, in two. And so we want to see how long that small intestine we can get because we want to compare the small intestine and the large intestine. This will take you a few minutes to do. It'll take you a good while, we said. I want you to see, I remember the small intestine is smaller in diameter, but longer. It's a lot longer than the large intestine, but the large intestine is longer in diameter, is larger in diameter, but it is a lot shorter in length. You can see I'm just pulling apart here. You know, I, like I said, you can start pulling, but if I get too fast here, it's probably going to pull my small intestine apart. So you just need to keep breaking apart with your fingers. See how it's kind of pulling now. If I get if I get too heavy-handed, you kind of got to kind of stop right there. So just take your time, and I can see that this is where it's getting ready to feed into my large intestine. Now, if you take and you want to cut that, uh, that away, be careful because it is going to be close to your fingers probably. You might could actually break it away. And I'm going to lay it down on my dissecting pan here and kind of cut that away. And you can see how long the small intestine is. And you can actually extend it on the table. And you can see I've got it connected to the large intestine. Large intestine, you're not going to be able to really separate it like you did the small intestine. But you can see it is actually longer. And I just pulled it apart there accidentally. Um, but you can see that it's as long as this table. And I've got my stomach here in my hand. I've got the spleen and it is connected down there to the large intestine. And um, that's the biggest difference in the large and small intestine, well, besides their function, is that that small intestine is really small in diameter, large intestine has a very thick diameter. And again, you should know the functions, you're gonna answer that from what we talked about previously in the year. All right, as we move on, uh, if you look down below where we just took the digestive system out, you can see these two bean-shaped structures. These are the kidneys, uh, and the kidneys are what's going to filter out any waste from the urinary tract. Uh, so that's just what those are located. A lot of people might think those were the testicles, but uh, those are not the testicles. Those are the kidneys located on each side of the, uh, the backbone there. All right, as we move to the top side of the diaphragm, uh, above it, 
uh, we will look and we will see that uh, we have our heart, which is this big structure right here in the middle, and then we have the lungs that are surrounding it. And you can kind of pull this diaphragm down a, a little bit out of the way so it's not there. But you should be able to see you've got these little linings. You've got all these little pieces of lungs. That's part of the lung there. Uh, you've got the lung. That's a lobe of the lung. That's a lobe of the lung. And the, lo lo the lungs, again, are what you are going to use for your respiratory system for, for breathing. And then the heart, obviously, is for the cardiovascular system that's going to help for pumping your blood. So what I want us to do next is I want us to take the heart and the lungs out. And so you can inspect them a little bit farther. So you're going to find your scalpel. Again, make sure you, you're careful not to get your fingers in the way because it will cut you. You've seen how sharp they are. But we're going to cut up here and separate it from the body. And they should be able to, you might have to come above here as well to cut it out. And it should just be able to be easily be removed. And you can see this is the, the tube right here that would be leading into uh, from the uh, throat, uh, bringing air in, the air passage uh, into the lungs. You can, you can see a good picture of it there. You can see the, the opening that would bring air into the lungs. All right, now. We've got our heart and our lungs. So what I want you to do, I want you to separate the heart from the lungs. So just lay it in your pan here and then just easily make some easy cuts. Watch your finger because you do have a little material to work with here compared to what you are with the large pig. And just kind of remove the heart from the lungs. All right, and now you can see you've got your heart. Now you should be able to see your four chambers of the heart. This is an enlarged view of the fetal pig heart that shows clearly the right and the left receiving chambers called auricles, and the lower part which is divided into two muscular pumping chambers called the right and left ventricles. So here's your right and left ventricles, Here's your left and right auricles. Now the post cable vein is blue and the pulmonary artery and ventral aorta are seen as light pink vessels. Okay, so we don't really have the blue because our pig isn't injected, but you should be able to see that this main coming in here, this main uh, organ coming in here is the main ventral aorta. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to take your scalpel and I actually want you to cut those into the four different chambers of the heart. So you're going to remove the two auricles and the two ventricles into the four different things. So just use your scalpel. You can use your dissecting pan and I just want you to basically cut those into the four different sections so you can see the four chambers of the heart so the two on top here we're going to remove those first I don't have much room to work here with this pig in the way but just make a cut there and now you've got your other two remaining we're just going to take and we're going to cut it right down the center. You can see the line where it divides. And you can split it there. And you can see the right and the left side from one another. And you can just lay them on your table there. Because I'm going to want you to take a picture of the four parts as one of your assignments. Using very careful dissection, it is possible to, to expose the brain as it lies in the cranial cavity. First, the skin must be removed from the skull and firmly controlled cut made in the midline of the skull. The bone can then be chipped away from the brain a bit at a time. 
When a thin covering tissue of adhering membrane is dissected out, the soft tissue of one half of the brain is exposed. All right, to continue with the brain dissection, we're going to need to flip the pig over. So go ahead and cut your cable off of your pig. You can remove those at this point. We're done looking at the ventral surface. And just flipping over. Make sure your juices stay inside of your pig here, uh, in the pan, I mean. Uh, make sure they stay there, and you're going to face him down like so. Now, this is where you need to be very careful because the skull is very slick. Okay, but as we just read, you want to try to expose the brain, but you're going to need to first make a cut down the midline of its brain. So a very controlled cut. Watch your fingers because it could slip off, but we want to cut right down the center here. And they do have a skull, so you can go ahead and you shouldn't go through there uh, to begin with. And you can see I'm going to expose the skull. Then what I want to do is I want to take and I want to cut right around the side here, kind of like a half moon, we want to get that out of the way. So we should be able to, if you make a good cut, you should be able to remove that at this point. So we want to just remove that skin. Now we'll tell you, if you remove the ears, it's going to be a lot easier to get to the skull. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove his ear so I've got more room to work around. So it shouldn't take much to just cut his, his ear off. And then we can also go ahead and cut this tissue that I, where I wouldn't, wasn't able to get around there so I can get down below this skull. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna remove that ear so I just have more room to get to, to that skull where it's in the way. This deer ear's still dangling. I'm gonna take that one off. And then I want to, uh, I want to go ahead and I want to remove this side as well of the skin. So take, and again, this half moon on this side, go above the eye. You should be able to see the eye right there. Go above the eye, come around the side, and then you should, you might be a little tough, you might have to get your scalpel and work under there to remove it. But now we're going to be able to Use your scalpel and open that up where you can see the whole skull. Now, this is where it gets tricky. You're gonna need, if you're gonna remove the brain, you cannot pierce through the skull because you're gonna turn it into mush if you do. So we want to cut right down the middle. Be careful with your hands there. You might need to flip him around so you get closer to him. Um, but we're gonna get as close as we can and we're gonna go right down the middle. Now again, I just felt it go through right then. It's gonna take a little bit to get through there. You might even have to do a little saw in action, but you wanna have a precise cut, because if you go too deep, it's gonna hit that brain, it's gonna turn into mush, and it's not gonna look like the picture that we just saw. All right, so now you can see, well, not too good, but you can see I've, I've got it split down the middle. Now this is where you need to make sure you might want to cut around the side, which I'm going to just pause there with that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my forceps and I'm going to try to come under here and I'm going to try to chip away a little bit at a time with my tweezers. So I'm going to just take up and I'm going to try to break off pieces. Be careful. Because this, like I said, this brain is really tender. I don't know that I'll get it out. I'm not a brain surgeon. Uh, some of you that might be aspiring to be brain surgeons, we'll see how well these brains look when you get done. We'll see if I want you working on me one day. But we're going to chip away little pieces at the time of one side of the brain. And right then, I think I just got into the brain. Because I went a little too deep. This is, like I said, very tough dues. You're going to have to be very meticulous. We might not even have time to get all of this completed because it takes so long to get a good brain because this skull is really, really hard. All right, as you can see, we're a little bit farther into the brain dissection at this point. I've removed both sides. I've chipped away um, the skull on both sides and I've got 
just a little bit, and you can see I've got a little, there's a little thin layer of tissue over top of the brain that will um, protect the brain if you can leave it on there. But what I'm gonna do at this point, I don't know if I'll be able to get it as clean as what I'd like, but I'm gonna take my scalpel and try to run it right behind here, the back piece of that skull. Oops, I just might have dug in there accidentally. But I'm gonna try to cut down in there. And then, you can see, I've, I've separated the back piece of that skull. If you look up here, uh, if you're looking down here, the cerebellum is going to be right down below there. I think that's actually a piece. Yep, I accidentally cut a piece. But the cerebellum is located right below there. If you're really good, and I'd have to take a lot more time maybe to get it, but if you can get that cerebellum out, uh, you can see from that picture when you compare it that that is what you're wanting the brain to look like. But like I said, it's in here pretty tight, kind of hard to get. But I'm going to take my scalpel and I'm going to try to run it right next to the bottom of the skull to try to get this out. And I've still got chips and pieces under there. It's tough to do. But I'm going to try to get the brain out without damaging it too much. Watch your fingers. I just about got mine right then. But you got his skull in the way. That's what gets so hard trying to get this brain out without damaging it. There's the front of the skull. You can see and I've still got a little piece of skull down here that's in the way and it's not allowing me to get my scalpel under there to get it out cleanly like I want it to. You might just stick your finger under here and kind of raise it up just a tad so you can get that scalpel under there. I can get right there. There we go. Maybe that did it. I'm gonna get as close to it as I can. Kind of like I'm filleting a fish. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room there once I'm able to dislodge it a little bit. All right, and here we got a fairly decent brain. If you want to take and remove that protective layer, you can see I've actually, I'm fairly proud of this brain. You can see my cerebellum is still connected down there. And you can see these are good pictures. I can, you can see I got a little bit too heavy handed right there, but you can see all the little different lobes of the brain there. Um, but that's a, a little pig brain. I don't know if you'd want me doing brain surgery on you, but for a dissection, that's not too bad. All right, so today we have completed our dissection of the fetal pig. I hope you have enjoyed uh, today. But before we can be completed, we have to do some tidying up and do our cleanup uh, and also get some things ready for you to turn in for your assignment. So what I want you to do, one person in your group needs to remove their gloves so that they can take pictures of the parts you remove for your assignment that you're gonna turn in. So again, remember, uh, lay, you should have them laid out on your table. You shouldn't have disposed of them yet. And so what I want you to take pictures of is you, I want you to take a picture of the liver. I want you to take a picture of your brain if you got it removed. I want you to take a picture of your lungs picture of your four chamber heart, and I also want a picture of your large intestine, your small intestine, and your stomach. And those are the main things that we removed today. Um, 
Now, once you get your pictures taken, the person that still has their gloves on, they need to take your pig and all of its parts, and we have a trash can over to the side that you're gonna to need to dispose of all of your pig and all of its parts that came off the pig into the trash bag. So do that first. And once you remove all that and all of its parts, then you're gonna take your dissecting pan, your pad, and all of your utensils that you use, your scalpel, your forceps, scissors, all of the materials, and you need to take it, you should have a sink at your station, you need to wash all of those off thoroughly. Um, again, make sure you're being careful with your scalpel when you're washing it off, because it is still able to cut you uh, fairly easily. But you wanna take all those, rinse them off really good, um, once you get them rinsed off really good, we're going to have a section over to the side where you're going to need to lay your pans and your materials so that they'll have time to dry off. And once you get all of that completed, then I want you to return back to your seats. Until